There's a question about uh, depression and medication. And the teaching of the Buddha, the biological and the mental, they inter are. They manifest based on each other. Our uh, emotions, our feelings uh, are very connected to the chemicals in our body. And our feeling, our emotion can produce uh, uh, chemicals that will be uh, toxic to ourselves. And the uh, inhibition and uh, these uh, feelings and emotions can uh, inhibit the production of a certain uh, chemicals, the neut- neurotransmitter fountains, and that create an imbalance in your body. So the mental can create um, the biological, and the biological can have an effect on the mental. So things uh, rely on each other to manifest. Uh, We don't um, reduce the importance of one side. All of us have the seat of depression. All of us. All of us have the seat of mental illness. But if we are in a good environment, this seat will have uh, not much chance to manifest. We have received the genes from our ancestors, our parents. And uh, we know by science that the the genes they don't, uh, they don't uh, turn on by themselves. They are turned on by our way of thinking, our uh, feelings, our perceptions, and our environment. It is the environment that helps turn on the genes in our, ourselves, the good and the negative genes. And the genes are equivalent to the bijas, the seeds that uh, we speak about in the teaching of the Buddha. They might be the same. They might not uh, describe it as uh, only mental or only physiological. These two aspects belong to the same reality. Uh, Neuroscientists used to ask the question about the difference between the brain and the mind. Is it true that the brain produces the mind? (laughs) 
is the mind is uh, uh, a product of the brain. How uh, could the activities of uh, neurons uh, bring about to the subjective mind? These are questions. But in fact, uh, mind and brain, they inter are. This is because that is, this is not because that is not. It's like a body and mind. It's not uh, the body produced the mind. Or the mind produces the body, but mind and, and body are two aspects of the same thing, and they always rely on each other in order to manifest. It's like a coin, a, a coin, a piece of uh, uh, one euro. There is the the head and the tail, and without the head, the tail cannot be, and vice versa. So, uh, mind and body are not two uh, distinct uh, entities. They are aspects of the same thing. And the seed of depression that uh, now manifests may have uh, been transmitted to us by many generations of ancestors. There may have been generation where that, when that seed did not manifest. But now because of the new environment, the dead seed has a chance to manifest. And that is why we have to take care, to take into account the, the element of environment. An iron, an environment is the object of consumption. Because uh, uh, elements of the environment touch off and turn on the seeds, turn on the genes in us. And that is why the teaching of the Buddha about uh, uh, food is very important. We consume not only the edible food, but uh, we consume only with, uh, also with what we hear, uh, we see, uh, we feel. Uh, we touch and so on, sensory. Um, uh, impressions, sensory impressions is the second kind of food. And the third kind of food is uh, um, intention, our intention, our evolution. Uh, the kind of deep desire in us. And the fourth kind of nutriment is consciousness. We consume consciousness. If we live with the number of people around us, uh, we consume their way, the collective way of thinking, of uh, perceiving. And, we, and um, in the beginning, we don't see that as beautiful, but because all of peop people around us think that is beautiful, and then slowly we come to see it as beautiful also. So uh, we are influenced by the collective thinking around us, and that is also consumption. And our depression has to do with all these sources of uh, nutrients of food. And we know that uh, uh, if there is uh, an imbalance within uh, our uh, mind and our body, uh, there may be some uh, disorder uh, in our mind, in our body. And we know that um, chemicals have to do with our feelings and emotions. Our emotions and feelings have uh, uh, connection, have to do with the chemicals also. If we used to think, to worry, to uh, uh, 
to perceive in such a way and then uh, our body can continue to produce or even uh, overproduce such or such chemicals that will bring disorder to our to self, to our body and mind. Or if we think and do and consume in such a way, we may uh, <coughs> inhibit the production of such uh, chemicals that are essential to our balance. So both uh, aspects uh, are important and we have to take care of both. Medication may help, but if you count only on medication, you are wrong. And doctors and psychotherapists, they know that. Medication can help, and you need medication, but don't rely on medication alone. You have to change your way of life. You have to change your environment, and one day you'll be able to to, uh, to stop uh, taking medication. If you don't change your way of life, if you don't change your sources of impression, you continue to use the medications. And sometime later, they will not work because uh, your body will be get used to it. Uh, So those of us uh, who are prescribing uh, um, medication, uh, so those of us who are using medication should be aware that medication can help, but they are not enough. We have received uh, the seeds, we have received uh, the genes from our parents, our ancestors. And uh, we should learn the way to handle these genes, these seeds. Don't give them uh, a chance to turn on if uh, they are negative uh, seeds. And uh, scientists of our time know very well that it is the environment that it is um, mm, our uh, attention that turn on the genes and the seeds in us. There is a practice called um, uh, Yoniso Manaskara, appropriate attention. We focus our attention only on things that will turn on the good things in us. Like uh, when we hear the sound of the bell, and naturally, as uh, we are a practitioner, naturally, we stop thinking. We go back to our breathing, and we enjoy the present moment. And the sound of the bell help with uh, appropriate uh, attention. They bring out, they turn on the good things. And we should create an environment uh, where the good seeds, the good genes in us have many changes to turn on. As uh, you are in a bad environment, you know that uh, even if you are taking medication, uh, that will not be a, a a, a, a solution, a long-term solution. So go on and take the medication that you need, but you should do something more. Change your way of life. Look at the source of nutrients uh, you are using to feed yourself. Uh, look at your environment to see whether that environment uh, is uh, always turning, uh, turning on the negative things in you. And if possible, you just change the environment. Even if you get to, you need to, uh, to live in a smaller house, 
to use a smaller car to have a meager salary, but if you can move to a better environment, don't hesitate to do so, because uh, your health depends on on that uh, wise um, decision. What is the purpose of the life, of life? But not in this life, um, all the galaxy, why, why we are, why exists the life? That is a philosophy. <laughs> no, it's why we are here, it must be uh, one reason. Uh, this is a chance uh, to discover the mystery of life. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> you have something to discover. You have something to discover, something very deep, something very wonderful to discover. And that, uh, that practice of uh, looking deeply can satisfy uh, your curiosity. That is one reason to like to live, to be alive, to discover, discover yourself, discover the cosmos. And this is a joy that is uh, a chance. And you might like to focus your question on how. and not to be caught always in the why. <laughs> How? Um, life is a wonder. Life is a wonder. And we are there to experience the wonder of life. And if we have enough mindfulness, concentration, and then we can get a breakthrough, and get deep into uh, the fact, the reality of the wonder. Uh, life is a wonderful manifestation. Not only the rose is wonderful, the cloud, the sky is wonderful, but the mud and the suffering is also wonderful. So enjoy uh, touching life, enjoy uh, discover uh, the mystery of life and don't spend your time asking uh, metaphysical questions. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Armin. I'm from America, New York slash Massachusetts. Um, so many intense emotions, <laughs> even here. <laughs> uh, as a, a young uh, person in the crowd and in the world, um, I was wondering uh, how, I guess, how to 
use uh, use use the my practice, but also uh, in a way that can be spoken and understood in a kind of a language for other younger people, because uh, you're sharing a very important ancient teaching uh, that has very good practicality in the 21st century. Uh, and I guess, what, what would you consider to be uh, a creative uh, language to use? Um, I guess with yourself, but also with other uh, younger people. Because I imagine when you do these talks, you change uh, your, your wording for a uh, different age group, obviously. <laughs> So, I said my question. <laughs> As uh, we look around, we see people suffer. Not only the adults suffer, but uh, the young people suffer. And suffering is a reality. That is the first uh, noble truth. <coughs> and the Buddha did begin with that uh, remark that there is suffering, there is ill being in society. And everyone aspires to, to, to suffer less and to help other people suffer less. And that is in everyone. When you have a strong emotion, you are not very peaceful, and you may suffer, and you would like to learn how to handle your emotion in order for you to be more peaceful, to suffer less, and to be okay, to be happy. So uh, we can use uh, several kinds of languages in order to communicate uh, that. Because we have things in common. We all suffer, and we all aspire to suffer less. Uh, we aspire to uh, experience the joy and the freedom. Uh, it's very important that we practice um, now, mindful breathing, mindful walking, mindfulness of cooking, of uh, uh, tooth brushing, so that uh, we can experience uh, the joy of living in the present moment. It's very important uh, to learn how to handle feelings and emotions, so we can we will not be uh, victims of these emotions and feelings, overwhelmed by them, and then. Uh, Based on that uh, uh, quality of life, uh, we can talk to other young people. <coughs> the foundation is uh, we have some uh, well-being in us. We have some joy, some compassion, <coughs> happiness in us. And then we uh, naturally find the kind of language in order to share. Uh, when you see a young person <coughs> suffers, you know that you have gone through that suffering, <coughs> and you are motivated by the desire to help that person to overcome his suffering. So you might invent uh, many uh, skillful means in order to help him or her. And when you are able to help a person to suffer less, to get free, and then you are nourished by that joy, and uh, your life has a meaning, mm -hmm. and you, you are somehow a continuation of Lord Buddha. Because Lord Buddha was a young person when he started his uh, spiritual career. And uh, after uh, full enlightenment, uh, he continued to help uh, people, uh, young or less young. And uh, he did not stop until uh, the moment when he he died, and he took a great deal of joy uh, helping people 
because his life has a meaning. And his uh, view is so simple. There is suffering, and there is a way out of suffering. So uh, people suffer in their family. People suffer in their school. People suffer in their workplace. And if uh, you have a practice that helps you not to suffer, and then it's a joy to, to share. And if uh, you are in a group of people who have the same kind of practice, who have the same kind of joy, of aspiration, and then you grow stronger, and your work uh, in the world will be uh, more effective. So um, Sangha building is very important. Uh, form a group of young people, practice the five mindfulness trainings very well, uh, get the joy and the compassion, and then you will be able to help so many people. And the language that will come naturally. You know what kind of language you should use in order to, uh, to help. The way I teach Buddhism, the language I use to teach Buddhism is already very different from uh, the former generation. So for your generation, <laughs> the language may change further. Uh, and. Uh, we need uh, the kind of language that can make people understand the practice. And uh, that language should not be overloaded by technical terms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dear Jai. Hello. Um, my question is, how do we forgive someone who we have never known intimately and whom we have no way of communicating for the suffering that they have caused in us. The first step is uh, to help ourselves uh, in order for us to have enough calm and compassion and intention to help the other person. Without that, we cannot do anything. Without that, we cannot forgive. When we understand our own suffering, when we are able to hold, embrace our own suffering, when we are able to cultivate our understanding and compassion, and then we are in a position to forgive and to help. And looking into us, we can see the other person. And looking into the other person, we can see in us we can see deeply in us also. Because that person and, and ourselves, we may share many things in common. That person may not uh, have received love in, in their childhood. That person may not know how to love, how to make the happiness of himself, herself. And that is why uh, that person does not know how uh, to make the happiness of another person. In fact, he or she has done harm to other people around. When you suffer and you don't know how to handle your suffering, you are victim of your own suffering and you make people around you suffer. That's very natural. And when you see a person like that, and uh, you can have compassion on him or her, and you don't blame him anymore, you don't blame her anymore. You say that this person 
is unfortunate. From his childhood until now, no one has helped him. Uh, no one has helped water the seed of understanding and compassion in him. He suffered and he did not know how to handle his suffering. He is a victim of his own suffering and he makes other people around suffer because of his impulses, of, because of his uh, craving and so on. So when you can see a person in that uh, way, compassionate, understanding, you see that he or she is a victim. You don't want to blame anymore. You don't want to punish anymore. In fact, you are motivated by a desire to help such a person. And you become a bodhisattva instead of harboring uh, anger, resentment, uh, hate. Uh, you want to help that person to get out of his uh, or her situation. And uh, looking deeply, understanding suffering, uh, making a bodhisattva vow to help. Well, all these elements help us to forgive easily the other person. Uh, and there are many people like that in the world, uh, making uh, people around suffer, uh, abusing people, uh, destroying the life of people. And uh, if uh, we are a bodhisattva with a great vow, we can help these people. Uh, locking them into prisons is not enough. Uh, punishing them may not help them. And therefore, we should uh, embrace the compassionate way in order to be able to transform them. And uh, transform them uh, uh, is to help society. Uh, Sometimes we have to lock them up in, in, in a prison because they want to protect other people. But we should lock him or her in prison out of compassion and transform the prison into an environment when, where he can, he can change. And that is why it's very important to, uh, to train uh, uh, prison guards uh, into bodhisattvas so that they can uh, take good care of uh, the prisoners and help the prisoners to change, to change their way of uh, thinking and looking. And that is uh, love as uh, a, a, a prison guard. Now you can be a good practitioner. And when you are compassionate, when you are able to look uh, at the prisoner with uh, compassion, you can see the change in the person of the prisoner. You change yourself first, and you help change the, the other person after. And uh, many uh, prisoners, many uh, people who have done uh, wrong in the past, now are able to practice uh, understanding and compassion. And they turn the prison into a practice uh, center where they got uh, transformation and healing. And many uh, of our practitioners are helping uh, uh, these people in prison in many ways. Dear Thai, dear Sangha, before I came to Vietnam, I um, had the privilege to spend several weeks in Laos, where I was able to um, meet with many people who have been affected by the war. As I stood in um, fields, some about this size, which still had a lot of unexploded ammunition, sometimes 40 or 50 uh, bombs 
I felt overwhelmed with sadness. <coughs> and there was some anger. Speaking to people who uh, continue to be affected, whether it's uh, friends or family who are killed by the unexploded ammunition that exists, or to a poor farmer who's had his leg and arm blown off at a young age, plunging his family into further poverty. I felt very sad. Mm. This young farmer said to me that this experience was um, his luck. I find it hard to accept that such experiences can be luck. Is this karma? And is this a time when we can be righteously angry? What is the mindful way to deal with the intense emotions? Mm. Many uh, social workers uh, we train in the School of Youth for Social Service have uh, died because of bombs and guns, because of assassination. And many of them have lost uh, one foot, one arm. This young lady uh, who got uh, more than 300 of uh, metals in her body that is uh, from a bomb called uh, anti-personal bomb dropped by the American uh, bombers. The doctors help to uh, extract, to, to take out the many uh, pieces of metals in her body, but there are still hundreds of them in her body so many, and they leave them like that in her body. And still, she's still alive, and she still carries these uh, hundreds of pieces of metal in, uh, in her body. And uh, when she was in Japan for treatment, she could not use an electric bang blanket because of these uh, small pieces of metal in herself. And they are my own disciples and students. I know that there are many unexploded uh, mines and bombs are still there in Vietnam, in Laos. In and that continue to kill people. And we need uh, to draw the attention of uh, people in the world and uh, ask them to help uh, removing these bombs, these engines of uh, death uh, that are still there in the land, landmines. And that those uh, dedicated people, professionals who are helping so the essential is uh, to learn how to do it with compassion because that amount of violence, lack of uh, consideration are part of our legacy, our heritage. And we should uh, take uh, the, wrong, the, the strong vow, the strong aspiration not to repeat uh, that kind of action uh, from now on. But uh, the bombs are not only 
in the land. They are in the heart of many people now. If you look around, you see that many people, even very young people, are carrying a bomb in their heart. They are ready to die, to punish. And how you can uh, diffuse the bomb in the heart of man is a very important work also. How to remove the hate in the heart of so many people. So far, the, the war against terrorism has not diminished the number of terrorists. In fact, they have increased the number of uh, terrorists. And each of them has a bomb within his or her heart. They are ready to die, and they think that they will die for a good cause. They want to punish. And that is why uh, cultivating compassion, helping these people to remove uh, their hate, their anger, is also a work, a very important work. That is also to defuse the bombs. And the bomb that we need to defuse are not only buried in the land, but they are actually alive in the heart of so many people. Looking in the direction of the Middle East, you see the situation is very hard because not only there are bombs exposed on the land, but also the bombs in the heart of many people. Only compassion is the answer to the situation. So why helping to uh, defuse the bombs, whether it is in the land or in the heart, we should keep our compassion alive. To stay sane, to stay uh, uh, alive. And I admire those of us uh, who continue to help removing these uh, death uh, engines in the soil, but I also urge uh, my friends to uh, practice in order to help uh, defuse the bomb in the heart of many people who, act, who actually are there around us. We pray the Buddha, we pray Jesus Christ, all our spiritual ancestors who support us in this uh, compassionate action. Uh, we should uh, think of our children and their children. And uh, we should uh, clean uh, the earth. We should clean our heart uh, so that our children will have uh, a better place to live. Thank you for reflecting on this.